episode, we are going to talk about this shift toward owning distribution, or some people are referring to it as deplatforming, and just generally the role of social media moving forward. It seems like in this space, things are really changing and at a rapid pace. And what's happening is that with data privacy changes and just shifts in consumer preferences, a lot of brands are leaning out or leaning away from over-investing in platforms like social media, um, things that are controlled by algorithms. And there are a lot of reasons for that, which we're going to get into. But this is this is kind of where we're starting today is why are people owning distribution? Why why are they shifting in this way? And 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 what do we need to think about as we discuss this as a topic and as a as a trend in general? So I think a good place to start is just talking about kind of the state of of content publishing today. So what if a brand wants to publish longer form content um, without a catchy hook, right? To please the social algorithms. How do you do that? Um, it can be really, really hard to do because quality content doesn't always drive social engagement. And so you're stuck in this is this modality of trying to create content for algorithms and really creating things for that algorithm rather than your target audience and the demographic you're trying to reach. Um, sometimes those two just don't always go hand in hand. So I think what's also really challenging about this is that new platforms are always emerging. There's so much to keep up with. There's so much. Um, it's such a wheel, a constant wheel, a, a hamster wheel for constant con content creation just because new platforms are always popping up. Um, and an engaged Twitter audience, for example, doesn't always translate to what works on TikTok, right? It's not a one size fits all when you create content. You're you're creating for all of these different platforms with different user preferences, and it's it puts brands in this position of having to build a new platform and a new audience every single time there's a new platform that comes up. And it's basically like starting from scratch. It's a really, really tough spot to be in. So what, what's kind of emerging now is that brands are noticing when they own their real estate, um, the content can live there as long as they want. You know, they can regularly update, they can repurpose, they can leverage that content in kind of um, more unique and interesting ways rather than if they were creating it for a social platform. So I think the big question here is, are social media platforms the best way to reach customers right now? Or is it better when a brand owns its digital real estate? And you know, a lot of brands are, are thinking about this right now. This is a big conversation, and a lot of people are, are diving into this conversation. Um, for example, the cosmetic company Lush. In 2021, they announced that they were going to exit social media. They're going to drop Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. And the reason for doing that is they wanted to own more of their distribution, right? So they, they didn't want to be at the mercy of the social media algorithms anymore. They didn't want to build in somebody else's sandbox. Um, there's also the fact that social media is just so noisy and it moves so quickly. And you can be investing a lot of time and energy and money into content that hardly gets seen just because things move so fast. Um, to add insult to injury, there's also the data privacy changes. So um, you now have to own first party data and, and offer greater personalization because those third party cookies are not available for retargeting efforts in the way that they once were. And, and I think that that's a good shift. I think it's a move in the right direction for customers to have more control over their personal data. The, the rub with this for content marketers is that now they're they're having to scramble and come up with well what do we do in a reaction to this how do we how do we adapt and how do we um, shift things so that we are collecting that first party data and and I think that that's where this idea of exploring owned platforms is really becoming more a hot topic and so it's it's not existing on social media that's the problem right that is not the issue here it's the lack of control that comes when you're building on essentially rented land so so some of the benefits of of kind of owning distribution are things like um, having more control right so this idea of owning your own sandbox so this comes in the form of for example building a an owned media arm or a media hub for your content this is really especially useful for people who build dedicated communities like on Patreon, for example, or growing a newsletter list. This can come in so many different formats, but this is kind of the idea of 
not building the community through social media, but on a on a platform that you have more ownership and control over. Um, there's also the benefit of better engagement. So studies show that social media engagement is already down overall. Um, but if you can build a platform of engaged users who have opted in to hear from you and have expressed interest in wanting to connect with your brand, you can move from a lower engagement platform to something that's much more likely to convert sales, like email, for example. Um, and then there's this whole idea of building trust and authority. So getting access to privileged data on how your audience is engaging with the content and in turn being able to deliver that value back to the community is data that social media today and third-party networks just are not going to give you. I mean, even Disney, for example, here, perhaps one of the best content creators in the last century. Um, they used to distribute content through third parties, but Disney knew that they needed to learn more about customers. They weren't going to be able to do that through third parties. So by launching Disney+, Plus, they now have over 137 million subscribers, which is not only an additional revenue stream, but they now control their content and have an avenue to study user behavior in mass, which is a huge, huge benefit for them. That rich customer data that they're collecting, that first party data is, is just so beneficial. And there's so many different things that they can do with that down the road. So, so what is the role of social media moving forward? Um, I would say that social media is not going anywhere, right? There is still a place and a time for social media. And even by deplatforming, um, many of these companies, even Lush, for example, has maintained a hybrid presence. So it's not, hey, we're throwing our hands up. We're not going to use social media anymore at all. There is still a time and a place for it. But as we navigate this shift toward owning audiences and getting that first party data, it helps to know what you can use that information for moving forward.